beer, the first and most important ingredient is hops. Young hops are grown from cuttings taken from old roots and each of these pointed eyes will produce about 15 feet of hop tendrils. In the springtime, the young hop comes through the soil and pushes obstacles out of its way. Already the stem is covered with little claws and the importance of these claws will be seen later. The leaves begin to expand with a lovely movement which is really so slow it has to be speeded up 25,000 times for you to see it. In a short time the plant begins to climb and now the purpose of the little claws is apparent. They are used for getting a grasp on things and with their help the hop can climb a practically smooth surface. When there is no more pole left to climb, the hop begins to put out flowers. These are the flowers of the male plant, but you will never find them in a hop garden, for there only female hops are allowed to grow. The female hop plant produces flowers of this type, and each one is a ball of scales. Attached to every scale is a sticky thread to catch pollen carried by the wind from the male plants. But all these flowers are destined by the hop grower to be disappointed spinsters. No pollen is near enough to be brought either by the wind or by insects, and so the threads fade away and fall to the ground. Each scale is intended by nature to be a cradle and protection for a fertilized hop seed. And although human beings have interfered and prevented fertilization, the scales continue to grow as though there were seeds within requiring shelter from weather and insects. As an extra protection for the non-existent seeds, the scales become covered with a bitter substance called leucolin. Here it is on the screen now, very highly magnified. Insects dislike it and keep away, but it is lupulin that gives flavor and aroma to beer. While the hops are maturing in the hop garden, in the fields the barley is ripening. Barley is the second ingredient necessary for the brewing of beer, for from barley seeds the maltster gets his malt. The seeds are placed in water until they have absorbed as much as possible. Then they are spread out in layers in a warm atmosphere. Naturally, the poor little things begin to grow and put out roots. The actual rate of growth is magnified 10,000 times for you on the screen. Their activities are interrupted by the maltster who turns them upside down to make sure that they do not grow too quickly and they have to change the direction of their roots. Suddenly the water supply is cut off and the roots wither up and die. Now the maltster has a good reason for this wholesale murder of innocent young barley. Here is a diagram of a grain of barley, and you can see that it is made up of three parts. A young plant waiting to grow, a large quantity of starch above, which is food for the plant, and a wall here between, through which the starch cannot pass. To get at the food, the plant produces a digestive fluid which can penetrate the wall, and turn the starch into sugar is able to pass back through the wall and feed the young plant. There is a certain point in the growth of a barley grain when the baby plant has produced the digestive fluid but has not had time to use it. At this point it is killed by the maltster. 
The grains are mashed up in warm water, and although they are dead, the digestive fluid continues to turn the starch into sugar. And this sugar mixture is the second ingredient in beer, which is malt. In the brewery, the malt is mixed with a liquid made from hops, and to the mixture, yeast is added. Yeast is a tiny plant made of little cells, and here on the screen are yeast cells under the microscope beside a human hair. The big thing on the right. You can see how small the cells are, but yeast moves about briskly when it is put into water, and when the brewer adds it to the warm, sugary mixture of molten hops, the cells begin to grow. When they've reached a certain size, new cells begin to bud out of them and eventually break off and start life on their own. You can watch this happening on the screen now. The budding out of the new cells is called fermentation and is best carried out in the dark. Now what does the fermentation of the yeast do to the brewer's solution? We can tell best by using the diagram of a molecule of sugar in which H stands for hydrogen, O for oxygen and C for carbon. The fermenting yeast breaks up the sugar into two molecules of carbonic acid which passes away as gas. while the remainder forms two molecules of alcohol. Here is the solution under the microscope. The alcohol does not show, but we can see the carbonic acid gas forming bubbles. If the bubbles are allowed to escape, we have still beer. If they are kept, the beer is sparkling, but still or sparkling, Sterile hops, the murdered barley, and the budding yeast have all united to give us beer. Mm.